This is Tuna on Toast. Before the Interrupters officially became a band, yeah. and you were working with musicians out there that everybody knows. One thing that I have never learned from you is how did who did you prove yourself to that they said, "Come on back, young man, and let's work, and I want to teach you stuff." It's weird, right? Well, we <laughs> no, were, we're, we're extremely smart. Well, we were lucky enough also to go to a high school that was like a music high school called Hamilton in LA. And they had an electronic music class that I was very advanced in. And that's like what I spent, you know, all those years learning about recording and stuff. So, and I played in bands. There were so many musicians there in my band that like this, there was this band in my high school that I was a big fan of. They were like seniors when I was freshman kind of deal. You know what I mean? And then one day they called me to record them and help set up their studio in their garage. When to I was, be like the engineer, yeah, producer when I was type in like things? 10th grade. Okay. And I went in and then I ended up joining that band. And the, one of the guitar players left to go work for, he was out of high school and he went to work for a management company. Now, in working at that management company, he met a manager that managed a band called The Transplants who told him, we were, the Transplants are looking for a keyboard player to go on the Warp Tour. And he goes, oh, I know someone that would be perfect for that. And then they called me, and I auditioned, and I got the gig. And that was kind How of- How old were you? 18. 18. Now, were you, did you grow up striving to be a keyboard player? No, but in the studio with, like, the people that I grew up recording, like, they all knew that I knew my way around keyboards, and, like, I could get from point A to point B. And Kevin another, can play every instrument. Well, <laughs> another thing about our high school, thank you, is that we had to take piano class. So I learned Beatles songs, and I, and I knew my way around a keyboard enough, and- I went to my transplants audition, 18 years old, you know, 105 pounds. Uh, my eight, dad dropped me off. With an 80 like, pound keyboard. Yeah, with a gigantic keyboard. You brought and your keyboard. Now, who was at the audition? So when I walked in, it was it was Tim Armstrong. Okay. And I think when I first got there, it was just him. And I was a massive Rancid fan. And also I had seen the transplants on their very first tour a couple years prior to that. Like Diamonds and Guns. Yes. Okay. Like they did two nights at the Roxy. I went I went up to Fresno to see him. Like I was into it, you know? So that, <laughs> that's why my friend recommended me. He knew that I like knew the tunes. So I go in there with my gigantic keyboard and um, I walked in in the middle of someone else's audition too. There was another guy there. <laughs> and I kind of sized him up real quick and I like went outside and I was just kind of like, oh. oh I was God. so nervous too. And then Tim comes outside and he's like, hey, so... You play keyboard? I'm like, yeah, I play keyboard. And he goes, well, cool. Yeah, this guy's pretty good, but um, we have a lot of samples on our new record. There's a lot of cool sounds. And I'm just trying to figure out how to get those sounds like to come out of the speakers, you know? And I was like, well, I actually have Pro Tools at home. And if you give me your album, like Master Stems, I could take them home, put the samples on my keyboard, and then they'll be exactly as they are on your album. And he goes, really? You got Pro Tools at home? Because my dad's an engineer and he had like a little Pro Tools rig in the house. And I was like, yes. Which is kind of crazy to think about now that I'm like, give me your masters. Right. <laughs> like, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to so meet then, you. So then he, go, he, he goes back in the room. The other guy leaves. He asked me to come in. Ooh, and He's like, could you play Diamonds and Guns? So I played it on piano. He goes, okay, yeah, yeah, that's good. And, and I was like, I, I think I'm in. You know what I mean? Wait, and hold on. He said, play Diamonds and Guns. And yeah. I know that. End. Do, 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 yep. do. And how many seconds or minutes did you play it? I played like two bars of it and he could tell by the two bars because it's like a loop. He was like, okay, yeah, you got it. Um, and I, I just remember being so nervous. I was like kind of like out of my body and then like, you know, Skinhead Rob shows up. Yeah. Uh, Travis Barker shows up and everyone shows up for band practice. But like, I hadn't in my mind finished the audition yet. So I'm standing there and everyone's just like, why is there a child in our practice room behind this giant keyboard? But anyways, long story short, I got the gig. I went on the warp tour with them. Come on. I know, and through that. You know, Whoa. I did a lot of engineering work with Tim and Travis had a studio too right. at the time. So when we got home from tour, I would go kind of work on other projects with those guys. And then I roadied for a bunch of bands. I just tried to stay busy in music because at the time I, I was like, I'm going to take a year off before I go to college. I like told my dad and, and he, he was like, really wanted me to go to college. And I was like, I'm going to get work in music within the first year. And after the first semester, he was like, mm -mm. and then I get the warp tour and I was just like, all right, I got to stay busy. So then I would do anything. If I was getting coffee, if I was engineering, if I was setting up drums, guitars, whatever. And through that, I made so many friends and we, in the, that world of like touring roadies and stuff, everyone looks out for each other. And if you get along, cause like 50% of your job qualification is being cool on a tour bus to be around <laughs> and not annoying. Sure. So I worked really hard on being not annoying. You know, <laughs> I'm sure they would do. Were like, you just you wide know? eyed and hyper or low key and absorbing like, and everything happening? Terrified. Just ter I just remember <laughs> like 
there would be days where I'm like, did I say one word to anybody all day today? <laughs> I did on the warp tour. I'd just be walking around like, oh my gosh, like there's the offspring, there's the dropkick Murphys, you know, there's all these bands, and I'm just like, ah, so scared. <laughs> Don't say the wrong thing. Don't say the wrong thing. But yeah, I mean, I but but you know, it's funny is like. Uh, now all of these guys are such a huge part of all of our story, you know, with Tim producing our records and putting out our records and like us recording our our record, our second record at Travis's studio and, and us opening up for Blink, us opening up for Rancid, opening up for the Transplants. Like th it's it's kind of like all melded into this one kind of like larger family thing that I'm so happy to be a part of. It's it's awesome. Hope you enjoyed. Now hit that subscribe button. And for more Tuna on Toast, listen wherever you get your podcasts.